it's uh, our, our, not our inspiration Wednesday telephone call, our Wednesday night Bible study, amen. Okay. And we're going to begin, uh, you in for a pen, Brother Sean? Yeah. Amen, amen. You know, you know. Hold on, I think maybe one of my bag. I think I think I one of my bag right there. Amen. Brother Sean, just look in the in the office, the secretary's office. There's some pens right there. pen. Amen. We're going to go ahead and begin our Bible study here tonight with our opening word of prayer. We're then going to move into our Q and A session. I know we got questions. Amen. Praise God. Yeah, no, uh -uh. don't you come in here talking about you ain't gonna ask a question tonight. We're gonna we're gonna get in those questions. Amen. And then uh, from there we'll move into our lesson for tonight. Let us begin with our opening word of prayer. Dear Father God, Creator of the heavens and the earth, God, we thank you this day for the opportunity that you've given us to return here again to your house to learn something new, learn something substantial, learn something awesome one more time. Father God, you have blessed us tremendously. You have blessed us in our risings and our fallings. You have blessed us in our comings and our goings. You have blessed us in the city and in the fields. God, you have simply blessed us to the point, God, where if truth be told, we owe you this time. As much as you give us, we owe you this hour. And we owe you this hour with the intent to learn everything we can to become the disciples and stewards that bring you glory, bring you honor, bring you praise. Now, Father God, we ask that you would clear our hearts and minds, give us a space, a clear space to, to, to digest and ingest that which you're giving us. And God, please enable us as we continue to move forward to be the servants, God, that serve you by serving others, that by making faith tangible, making faith real, making faith uh, 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 palatable for the community around us. Now, Father God, thank you for those who are here. Thank you for the travel mercies and bringing them here. Father God, if there's anyone that's on their way to Bible study, we pray that you would bless them as they are working their way to Bible study, God. We pray that you bless those who wanted to be here but could not be here. And Father God, we most importantly pray for those persons that you're sending our way to join us here at First Fellowship Charlotte as part of the body of Christ. God, thank you for your love and your mercy and your grace. It's in your son's mighty matchless, marvelous, magnificent name that we do pray. Amen. 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 We're going to begin our, our, our Bible study session here tonight. Uh, amen with our Q&A session. Amen. I know we have questions. I know Brother Sean oh, went man. home oh, and, 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 and asked his question. Amen. 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 I know she will. I know she, she will. will. I see Sister Lily Glenn on, on, on Facebook has already sent us her prayer request. So we will we will it we will it can, we'll pick those up uh, at the end and and um, we will uh, 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 we will uh, uh, share those and raise those. Amen. Praise God. Okay, so one of the one of the internet. Okay, it came on the other one. Amen. You know, sometimes I worry about my computers here. Uh, one of my computers acting like they weren't going to have no internet tonight. So it oh, it came on. Amen. And it's broadcasting live. Amen. amen. Papa Tapa Tutu. Yep. <laughs> amen. So let's begin with our Q and A session. I know we got questions. I <laughs> there's a question that. Okay. Uh, you think of the guy's name that he sort of God designated him to be over the Jews. He was a he wasn't a Christian himself. What's this guy's name? In the in the Bible? Yeah. He designated him. Are you talking about Moses? No, no, not Moses. Joshua. No, Moses was a Christian, right? No, he was a, Moses is, is is Hebrew. He's a Jew. He, Jew. Christians yeah, are Persons aren't designated Christians until after the resurrection of Christ. Right. Okay. okay, so so they're Jews. So this person, so you're saying, was this person placed over the the Hebrews, the Jews, or was this person placed over a Christian community? Well, I may say the Hebrews or the Jews. He, he, he was prepped for what God. They said Herod. He could have been Herod. Okay, and what did he do? What 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 is what is it? He, Sort of a, what did he do? He, now Herod mistreated 
his own people. He yeah, sold his people out uh, yeah. for, for the Romans. For the Romans. Right. Yeah, he did. Yeah, right. that's what he, for the Romans. But he, Yes, yeah, so he did. I, I had to He killed John the Baptist yeah, to give the head to uh, his wife's, wife. which was his brother's wife, mm -hmm. uh, as a gift. Because the, the, the wife asked her daughter to dance with Herod mm -hmm. because she knew that Herod was sexually attracted to his stepdaughter. Mm -hmm. And so she danced very erotically. Mm -hmm. And in, in his moment of eroticism, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, told her he would give her anything, anything she, she wanted. wanted. Right. And all she had to do was name yeah. her name yeah. what it was. And she said, well, give me the head of John the Baptist. And the word said instantly he regretted that. Because truthfully, the word, we don't pay attention to this. The word says that secretly Herod was a disciple of John. That he loved listening to John and John's teachings. What he did not like was the fact that John... As a prophet, and this is what we have to remember as prophets. Sometimes prophet, many no, not so not many times prophets are not here to please the crowd. Prophets are here to deliver the word of God. Mm -hmm. And so what happened? John Herod, who had fallen in love with John's teaching, didn't have a problem with John until John's teachings reflected back on Herod when Herod decided to take Heroditus, his brother's wife, as his own wife. And, 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 and John is referring, and he's speaking to a commandment about where, it's in Leviticus, where it says, uh, uh, you shall not know or, or lay with your brother's wife as your own, all right? And so what happened, he's taken Herod, Herodotus, they've, they've had sexual intercourse, now, the interesting thing is when you think about that, there are times when God has instructed brothers to take the wife of, his, of a deceased brother to lay with her to produce children. But, but the key is, the idea is that the brother is producing children with the brother, with the other, with the deceased brother's wife, not to marry her, but so the brother's line continues on. It's a distinction. Herod has taken Herodotus as a wife, because she's fine too, mm -hmm. you know. He probably, he probably the little brother, the older brother. He sees the brother, and he says, "Oh, she's fine." Probably lusting after his sister-in-law, and here she. And, and, and clearly, Her Heroditus is presented as one who doesn't care which brother she's married to, as long as she stays within the within the, uh, the palace, the royal palace. And go ahead, bro. Okay, now I know I don't know who it was, but when you used to have wives and concubines. Concubine, Jeff. Coffee Uh-huh. Which was I don't know how many and they how they, many you support. Okay, well that's what I'm saying. But it wasn't in that time it wasn't well, illegal. It, it, well well it, it was. It was. Cause cause here, here's it. So let's put this in context, alright. The is it the seventh I should know this given that number. The seventh commandment I think is thou should not commit adultery. So that's the first thing. And, and that is God, one of God's commandments for Israelites in relation to other Israelites. Okay? In this case, all right, uh, it, it wasn't so much uh, uh, that you could not have concubines. Come on in. Hey, Doc. Come you on in. Doc. Come pray, on. Praise God. There, there is a brother. God somewhere. Somewhere. Hey, 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 between learning about that I'm, that I'm lighter than my best friend who's been skinny all his life at this particular moment, and seeing you here tonight, I, 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 I want to confess. Uh, oh, 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 Confession's good with the soul. Yeah. Hey, you're too nice. Uh -huh. It was so dark, I could not find the gate. Oh, oh okay. 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 Well, you know mm -hmm. what? You, you, it is that entrance is dark. What we really need, we need a light right there at the entrance. Oh, okay. yeah. You know, cause there, there, there are lights. It's yeah. ones on this side, about maybe 50, 70 feet away from the entrance. Mm -hmm. There's another one 50, 70 feet on that side. But we actually need lights yeah. to the entrance. Okay. Well, sure. here's the thing. Let me go. Let me go ahead and say this. I'm praying to God that we grow, that we grow so much that we need a new facility. And in yeah. the new facility. We're going to have, look, such thing as lights ain't going to be a problem, all right? Because we're going to make sure that you know when you pull up that you have first fellowship. Amen. In fact, I, I, in, in fact if I had my way and I could convince some of you deacons about this architectural design, then you would not miss 
first off, so it'll be right. In the, we ain't leaving the property. We got all that property in front, but we're going to put the, the new sanctuary right there. And so you're going to see the sanctuary. You're going to see all the lights coming out from the sanctuary and all that. So, amen. Praise God if we grow. Not if we grow, when we grow. But let me get back, let me get back to you. So, it was illegal for, in God's eyes, for a spouse to commit adultery with another Israelite. Remember the rule, the, the Torah only applies to relate inter relationships between Israelites. It does not apply when you go outside Israel with heathens or Gentiles, okay? And so this is why we talked about, uh, I, think, I think it was last week, or we talked about recently, I don't know what, where we were, oh, so Saturday, Saturday at the Leadership Development uh, Seminar, how is it that God says on one hand, thou shalt not commit murder, but on the other hand tells the Israelites to go kill uh, the Amalekites and other people? That's because the, the Torah is about how one Jew is raped to another Jew. At the time God gives Torah, there is not enough Jews for them to take the land and hold it. If they went to the promised land with the numbers they had, they would have been killed. They, they are going against uh, nations that, that they number in the millions. Israel at that time, the number said anywhere between 1.5 and 4.7 Israelites. All right, That's a lot of us. But it, it, it's nothing when you're going against a nation that, ha that has an army of a million people. And, and, and in the city, in the city state, they got 20 million people. But imagine New York City being a, a, its own state. You got that many people living there. Having 1.5 million people is not enough to, to save you because not all 1.5 million people are warriors, are capable of fighting. Yeah. And so, when Israel, this is why, this is why uh, God doesn't necessarily punish Solomon for all, his, all the concubines and wives he takes. Because he takes uh, heathen whites and concubines, but this is right. but but but, this, but here's the thing. But this is the reason why God punishes David for sleeping yeah. with Uriah's wife yeah. because yeah. Uriah was another flesh and blood Israelite. Yeah. And not only that, but God had told David, "Now I don't give you every piece of straight tail that you want." <laughs> I, I just, let, me, let me just be real. Let me be real. I mean, he it, anyone that shake their behind in front of David was probably gonna end up in his tent before the night was over. With. But but God, the one time he said, "I will not let you have this," was Uriah. And even when David disobeyed him, listen to what God says to David when God spoke through the prophet Nathan. Because Samuel has died now, and Nathan has taken his place. God says to Nathan, "I gave you." Eight wives, because I thought that's what you wanted. And if giving you, keeping you happy meant giving you 8,000 more, I would have done it. That's a problem if you are strict literalist, literalist of what the word says. Because the word says, thou shalt not commit adultery. Here is God saying, not only am I going to give you uh, the woman, but I'm gonna put you in a situation where I want you to commit adultery. Hey, he said, if eight would if eight wouldn't keep you happy, I would have given you eight thousand. He said, but I told you to keep your hands off of this one because that's all this man had. You have the kingdom, the power, po the palace power, people at your beck and call. All this man had was Bathsheba. Yeah. And here's the thing: he then uh, says, and what you did, you put him in your place. Because technically, honestly, if we're going to call it, David should have died on that, on that, that the battlefield. Because God's king leads from the front, right, right, not from the back. Right, right, right. That's true. Now, if you watch Robin Hood, the different version of Robin Hood, or, or better yet, you watch the, if, I don't know if you've seen the, uh, the, 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 the Camelot story, the King Arthur story, with, with, uh, with uh, 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 the guy, Sean Connery. You have to see the one with Sean Connery. Uh, uh, because the one, the old one from the 70s, the guy's actually in front of them leading. But Sean Connery, leading the Knights of the Round Table and the troops, sat on a hill. And he would give commands to his generals. His generals would pass them down, and they, they would get down into the valley where they're fighting. But he never went down in the valley to fight. Okay? 
That's not, that, that's not how God's leaders, God's kings lead. They lead from the front of the line. They lead them into battle. Just like a shepherd. A shepherd goes before the sheep, not behind the sheep. Before the sheep and leads them. And so, uh, 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 it, it, so, so in, in saying that, David should have been on the front line when you're in the place that you're right. He should have died. Of course. Go, go ahead, Doc. When did this change? And I, I know. I know. When, 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 when did we change over it being so wrong to have concubines and Ephesus wives and everything? Yeah, I mean, I it, know. It, it, it happened in Victorian it, England. It happened. It, it happened at the time. It's, it, the, the time period is named after the Queen, Queen Victoria, because she brought a, a certain grace and respectability to the throne that the, that the monarchy did not have. But what happened, it imposed upon uh, Western civilization these rules of morality that still exist today. In, in, in other words, this is why... We, in fact, if a, if a young lady came in church, so let me tell you, I was at Walmart one. I'm going to describe what she looked like. Imagine she came in church. This young lady came into Walmart. She was, it was warm. She was wearing her outfit. She was strutting. She was confident. Her top was sheer. And she was wearing no bra. So you could see. And so, and so she had a skirt. It was like one of those... I call it the, the ballerina of the birthday tutus. And she was wearing that, and then she was wearing a pair of, I forgot what you call it, the stockings that come up to the middle of the thigh, and you have the strap. Yeah, garter yeah, belt. Yeah, the garter belt. belt. Yeah, the garter belt. belts with the pantyhose. Yes, and so they came up and around, and then she was wearing a pair of thumbs, but there was nothing under the, 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 the tutu. And she had, she had on her glasses, had on the big hat, and she's walking through Walmart, and, and all the guys are looking like, oh my God. Every woman's looking like, if you trick if you don't get to some, some place. Now imagine if she wore, now, now imagine she wore that to church. We've been outraged. We've been running to get something to cover up. But you know what the problem is? The problem is that's that Victorian English morality kicking in. Because the interesting thing is, once you get out of Western society, so it's really once you get out of America, England, uh, really those two countries, most other countries have a much more liberal understanding of sexuality, mm -hmm. sensuality, and the human body. If you were to go to South America, it doesn't matter if it's uh, Central America, South America, Mexico, mm -hmm. Panama, uh, Cozumel, Brazil, you will see on their commercials on their TV commercials where the persons are absolutely naked and they do not have the little pixelated right, 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 covering right, up their bodies. Right. You know, you go, you go to Amsterdam, you literally walk down the street, mind your business, and all of a sudden go ding, 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 and the, the, the shade will roll up and you will see, <laughs> see, uh, see two people having intercourse in the, right down the street. You know, and you're watching in through the window them having intercourse. They're being paid to have that intercourse. That's because, again, sexuality elsewhere is not set the way, it's not considered here. Right. There's a reason why in Africa, even and, and let, let, so let me not I don't want you to get this twisted. Africa is as civilized, if not more civilized, than we are here in America. The problem is they only show the jungle whenever they want to show Africa. Africa got great bit cities. But in their uh, ceremonies, in their in, in their festivities, in their performing, they still perform basically naked, right? Because they are they're part of ceremony. The, the origin of ceremony was there was to be nothing between them and the gods they worship, not even clothing, and so they still perform naked. I've got a classmate who posted a picture on Facebook where she was uh, in Africa for some reason, I think a job or whatnot, and the the the, the some of the women that she became friends, there was a festival and they asked her to perform. And, and she was so nervous because she had to be naked. Now they had painted her body and everything like there everyone else, but she was still naked. But she she performed amazingly. She I didn't know the girl had that much rhythm. Cause I, I said, I said, if you had that much rhythm, you should have been one of the girls at Ebony Fire at here at Hampton. And whatnot. But but I say all that to say that sense of, of it's impermissible 
is only because we still are living pursuant to an age that has been outdated and outmoded. We still sit to the Victoria study. This is why if you go to the Middle East, you'll be driving down the road, and there'll be this beautiful mansion over here on the left. You'll be like, oh my God, look at this course big. Look, look at the rolls and the big land and, 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 and the Maybach outside. You look over there, the same one over there. Wait a second, isn't that a rose man? And then what the, what the tour guy would tell you, those are the wives of one husband. And the law is that a husband can have as many wives as he affords. And he can afford. And if he does it for one, he has to be able to do it for another one. See, now that, that offends our sensibilities. You ask my wife right now, you say, can Pastor Al have another wife, even, even if he keeps you in, and you can even say, even if he keeps you in good, she will look at you and, and just walk away. Because the idea is that I belong to her, and let's be honest, she can't have no other husbands. She can't have no other husbands. Now, that's mine. I don't work hard for that one. You know what I'm saying? I don't work hard. I don't been through hell and back for that one. I have fought with her for her, okay? <laughs> so, so no, no, they ain't, uh -uh, ain't going to be no sharing. Yeah. And I understand it. But again, that's our sensibilities. But you get outside the continental United States and you'll find just how, understand just how conservative that sensibility is. Even those of us who call ourselves liberals will find out just really how conservative we are with certain things. And so that's why it became a problem. But up until that problem, up to that time, to the Victorian age was instituted, there was, there was no issue with that. You don't, you don't read people having issues with men and women have, uh, being in, 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 in polygamous relationships, marriages. You don't, you don't read about that. That's only when the church, let me say it like that, the church said it was wrong, that the Western church said it was wrong, because our Eastern church counterparts don't have this problem. This is not an issue for them. Because they still operate on the same rule. This is why uh, uh, this is why Jacob could be married to both uh, Leah and Rachel. Mm -hmm. In fact, when Jake, when 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 uh, uh, Laban snuck Leah in into the into the tent, that should have been it. If you operate according to today's standard, mm -hmm. Jacob was just S O L. You know what that means, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, and Jake, 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 In fact, there's a commercial. There's a uh, uh, a commercial, it's a car care commercial where this guy, you see this guy and woman, they get married, they're so happy you, and the camera focuses beyond that gap between them mm -hmm. to one of the, the to one of the best men and he's crying. Mm -hmm. And the commercial goes along some way saying, you know, she was everything that you wanted. She laughed at your jokes, da 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 da. But the problem is your car wouldn't start on that fateful day. So your best man, your your best friend went to pick her up and now they're getting married. Oh, I see. You know, you know, uh, 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 um, uh, what was I saying? I kind of lost my thought telling that. But what was I just saying? What was coming out about the Eastern countries? Oh yeah, yeah. They, 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 they still, they, this whole elongated support. <coughs> Jacob should have been like that. Jacob should have been like that brother in that car commercial when Rachel got married. He should have been crying because. My father-in-law snuck the wrong one in on me, okay? Yeah. Which I say, I have questions. How do you not know it's the wrong one? I don't care. It ain't never that dark. I'm going to be honest with you. And, 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 and if, you like, if you like Rachel just that much, you should be distinguished from the voice. Yeah. Like my, my, my sister-in-law and my wife, they're sisters. They do not sound alike. Right, right. My, my mother-in-law is a twin. I don't think her and her, her sister sound alike. You know? My dad and my my dad and my uncle. Sometimes I think they sound alike, but I can tell. I can close my eyes and hear the difference. You know what I'm saying? But and, and here's the thing. And if you like her that much, you should be able to tell that that you ain't in the band with the right one. Which says something to me about Jacob. That at the time Jacob wasn't necessarily worried about which one he was worried. He was worried about. Well, let me move on. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. And, and, and so, uh, but no, so, but what happened, that's why Jacob was able to have two wives. That's why, uh, what's his name, that's married to Hananiah and Paniah, had two wives. He could afford it. <coughs> this is why, uh, in, in fact, Jacob ended up having, speaking of which, he had two of his wives' slaves become concubines. Yeah. Then he married them, so he had four wives. Yeah. 
Mm. He had two concubine wives. Yeah. They were really the, his Rachel and Leah's servants. Right, right, right. They gave their servants to Jacob because at one point they were unable to birth children. Mm -hmm. Both of them were unable to birth children. And so they were giving their, their, their servants so that they may raise children mm -hmm. certainly. But what happened, Jacob takes from his wives. Mm -hmm. Again, I bring it back to the theory, Jacob's out to get his. You know what I'm saying? He ain't necessarily out to be, be a, a, a father to these folks. You know, I, and in, fact, in fact, I think that's one of the reasons why the elder brothers have problems with Joseph. Because it's not until Joseph comes around and now Jacob wants to be a father. Now he wants to be dead. He don't fall in love with Joseph. For whatever reason, he saw Joseph, his heart, it hit his heartstrings. Now he wants to be a daddy. He's got nine other sons that be like, where, where you been? You want to football practice? You want to basketball practice? You didn't show up at the games. You didn't show up at the recital. You didn't come to PTA meeting. You didn't do the, the father-son outings. You didn't chaperone the school field trips. You ain't done trash or jack trash. You know the word I really want to use. You know, uh, but now you want to be a daddy to this Negro right here. Just because you like his mama, you didn't like my mama. Can you hear? I guess just imagine because. I, I really think many times that the word sanitizes the, 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 the situation because it's been edited and you've had translators who want to present God in this neat fashion. But what we found is God is truly a shepherd. God really has to get down in the muck and the mire and the ish and, and pull us sheep out of it. And not only pull us out of it, but clean us That's up, clean right. us up. Mm -hmm. and, you, and if you ever had gum in your hair, you know how hard it is to hide it. And the same thing, you know what I'm saying? If you ever had a child to put mud in their hair, you were washing for days to get that mud out of there. And he has to go through all that ish to save us and clean us up and make us right so that we can be who he needs to be. And, and, and here's the thing. I think the translators have sanitized the scriptures. I think they're sanitizing. But, that, but I'm trying to give it to you real so you can see. So, it, yeah, technically in the world we live in, right now, if you get married and then you try to have a concubine, you're probably going to be divorced and owe your wife a lot of alimony. <laughs> because the way the law is set up right now, the way our civilization is set up in America, one man, one wife. This is why there is such reluctance for gay marriage. Because, it, again, it counters, strikes against the one man, one wife rule. It's now one man, one man, one woman, one woman. Mm. The definition of the family is changing. Sure, yeah. And so it, it is, you, we're running up against things. And, and one thing I've learned, and I've, it was confirmed to me in this book I was reading, where it was um, um, uh, uh, Canoe in the Mountains, uh, Christian Leadership in Uncharted Territories. It says people aren't afraid of change. They're afraid of the loss that occurs because of the change. The day changes every day. In a couple hours, it'll be Thursday. And you're going to go through the routines of Thursday. Guess what? The TV shows that come on tonight will not be on tomorrow. You don't care about that. As long as you know next week, next Wednesday, your show is coming back on. But if you like me and they mess around and cancel Star Trek, you about ready to go through the TV screen. <laughs> My daddy canceled Star Trek. Uh, so I started I can only get 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 five seasons. What what happened to giving me in my whole seven se season series? And what I, I know, I know. I'm a little strange. I'm a little strange, a little off. Uh, you got you got to you got to just let me be me and 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 uh, and I it, it, well anyway. Praise God. Amen. Pastor, Show me I'm do. Pastor, of course. Yes, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead Doc. We all have a little of insanity with us, don't we? You got a lot of us handy with you. Okay. Now I told somebody that is. He feels better, he feels better now. Okay. <laughs> Remember what I told you last time. In the last time, we didn't have to stop to think about this. Genesis one, chapter one presents water as chaotic, yeah. as disruptive, as disorganized, as destructive, and dangerous, yeah. and deadly, and insane. And guess what you're made up of mostly? Water. water. There was such a wonderful inconsistency and irony there that here it is, God is giving you his spirit and giving it to you so that you can establish order, but he's giving it to an individual or a creation that he made out of water, made out of the very chaos that he wants you to, uh, to bring into order. 
This is why many of us are met are a mess. Many of us are so screwed up not because of something we did, it's because our nature is screwed up. I think this is the basis of why Paul makes an argument about his sin versus his flesh. I mean, his spirit versus his flesh. That his flesh is water, it's chaotic. The spirit is what God breathed into him. And so what happened, there is a battle occurring between the chaotic water inside of him and the spirit of God. And so this is why he says, the sin and the evil I would not do is the very thing I find myself doing. The good I wish I would do is the thing I find myself not doing. What I want to do is that which I don't do, and what I don't do is that which I want to do. Oh, what wretched man am I? Yeah. <laughs> you know, he goes, I, I think that's because Paul, a, 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 a former Pharisee, who's been trained since birth in the law, is looking at the law and saying, wait a second, there's, now I understand why there's such conflict inside of me and other folks. We're warring in the spirit. We've got, we've got this, this chaos, this disorder, this confusion, warring with order, peace, and tranquility and purpose. And so, yeah, 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 you can be, yeah, we got a lot of insanity in us. And it ain't just because we keep doing the same thing, expecting different results. Because I do different things all the time. Let me tell you, I think my parents thought I was a saint, okay? I'm liable to get up on the top of the roof, take a bed, a bed mattress with me, and jump off the seat and then we'll cushion the paw down there. My mother and father said they had to keep an eye on me because, I, because me and the mercy room had a standing date. <laughs> We did. And my mommy said, why are you doing all this if then if you're afraid to go to the mercy room and let them fit you? Oh, yeah, she said. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I, in fact, we laugh, because again, I tell you, my, my, some of my, one of my babies is, is the exact mirror of me. And one thing my family always says, you've never been scared of anything. That's not true. I've been scared of a lot. It's just that unlike some of my family, unlike some of my family members, I was unwilling to let my fear stop me from going to do it. In fact, how I conquered my fear was really pushing my way through doing it anyway. You know what I'm saying? And so, uh, uh, you know, my, my mother-in-law and my mother, both, every Sunday have the same critique. How do you do it? And, and my mother-in-law recognizes that, and you're doing it without notes, too. That's right, 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 right. You know, how do you, I said, because that's just how God has made me. I'm not scared. I am fearful of mishandling the word, but I'm not scared to be before you to talk. I said, and I said, now, if you put me in another setting of having to be before, I may be scared. Like if, if you, as much as I tease about wanting to do 15 minutes of comedy, I may not make it through five. Right, right, right. Because that's a different context. You know what I'm saying? But in this context, this is what God has given me. But, but again, I, I do a lot of insane things. I do a lot of insane things. I do a whole lot. And you do a lot, too. Yeah. You know, the, only, the only reason why you know, we ain't in a, a, a mental hospital is we've been smart enough not to do it around enough people to make them go. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah. I thought we were personal. Did we? You know, that's the only reason why we're not in an insane hospital. But we do. We do. We do. Uh, in fact, I drive my wife crazy. <laughs> yeah. I drive crazy. That's what I do. Uh, now, I'm sure my mother like, well, he's yours now. Don't send him back here. <laughs> <Yeah, right. laughs> no, he's yours. Uh, I don't dealt with him. You, you, he's now on your time. You know what I'm saying? So, but, but, but again, yeah, we, we are the same. We are the same. The, the, the question, the, the, the reality is not whether or not we are the same. Is how well are we able to function with inside of it, in spite of our insanity? Okay. So all of us are insane. Yeah. You know, uh, uh, amen. Uh, I'm obsessive compulsive. That's a form of insanity. Mm -hmm. Because guess what? I have to have a certain order before things do, yeah. before things can happen. Also, things have to happen in a certain order. If you, if you try to get me out of my order, mm -hmm. I'm all kind of upset with you. So let me give you an example. We had, clearly, we had a cable man come in and work on this TV. <laughs> okay. All right. Now, I have put this cord that allows me to take what's from the computer to the TV, and I have wrapped it in 
and there's a hole back there to get to the back. It's very small. Yeah, right. right, right. Okay. Mm -hmm. He comes from this side of the T where he doesn't need to be in the hole at all. He just plug up. Whoever he was had the unmitigated goal to unplug every cord in the back of that TV. So when I got here this morning ready to teach Bible study, oh, I cut on the TV, I could not figure out why this was on until I went back there and every cord back there in the back where he didn't even need to touch was on unplugged. I was so discombobulated, Deacon Jones was sitting here, it's like, so did you hope more to go back? I said, no, it was good until I got here. <laughs> That, that disrupted me. There, there was one morning, one Sunday morning, we couldn't get the mics working. That discombobulated me right? because that's out of the order I'm used to. I'm used to it being in a certain way. You know, uh, 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 and, and if, we, if you mess with it, my wife likes to mess with me. I have a certain place to put things. Exactly. And so I'd be putting stuff up, and I say, oh, little hand, and she'll take something and put it over it. I'm like, why are you, why are you playing? Why are you playing? She does it on purpose or okay. Yeah, she does it on purpose. Oh, okay. <laughs> so so, so let, me give, let me give you an example. Let me give you, let me give you an example of insanity. No bowls in a dishwasher should be on the bottom, the bottom shelf, shelf of the dishwasher. The dishwasher is made to put bowls on the top. On the top. Sure, okay. In fact, the, the outside, yeah. the outside sure. valleys. Right, right. Are for the are for the glasses and cups. Mm -hmm. That inside valley has a dip for the for 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 the bowls, and then the small salt the salsa plates go in in the in the in the, in the very middle. That's the way they're designed. Mm -hmm. On the bottom is meant for. That's why you have the the, the, the rows that are very skinny that, that go the three the three rows and they, they're, they're, those are for the, the, the large plates. Right. Then you have the, the wider rows that go behind it. Sure. Those are for the the, the, oh. the, the pots. And my wife <laughs> puts bowls and saucers the on the bottom. There you go. <laughs> I didn't know something. Do you know what kind of arguments we've had in this house about that? Like you don't put that on the bottom. Here's another. My wife has got this incredible belief. That the only way silverware gets clean is if you turn the silverware up so it's sticking up. I said, so you want me to kill myself when I put my hand in there and take the dishes out, right? That's what you want, right? And she said, well, they won't get I said, yeah, they will. And she said, she, and she, but, and, but, and she, and, but I tell her, she said, well, don't get clean. I said, well, sometimes you got to help the, the dishwasher. If we've had lasagna and all that melted cheese and all right, that, right, right, it's right. not going to pull it off. you got to take the, the scour scrub right, right, right. and rub it a little bit. Help it, help it out. You know, you can't, you can't put you can't put a pot because he's good at burning things. Okay. <laughs> uh oh, you. I'm telling on tonight. Oh, yeah. Amen. Praise yeah, God. Out, so praise God. Right now. Praise, praise God. God. You told. She, she's good. She's good at burning. She, 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 I mean, she's not as bad as my mama, but she, but, but she she's good at burning things. The food be good. What happened to Alice? Let me clarify that. Let me yeah. show you this. You can't be laughing at this much, man. Right? But 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 the, it, it's not the whole dish to burn. It's the top layer and the outside layer. That touches the the, the, the the container that's burned. The inside is really good. <laughs> and if, you, if you can get past there and get to the inside, you get all right. And so what happens that that leads for hell trying to clean it up. And so there are times she just going in the dishwasher. I said, no, really, you gotta let that thing set overnight. Put, put some water in it, put a little dawn on it, and just let that thing set. Then go through with a scouring pad, clean it up, and then put it in there. You know, get 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 loosen up some of that stuff. <laughs> But man, because I, 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 and here's the thing. So when I put the silverware in the little, in the door, so not only do I turn them down, but each one has a separate type of silverware. Oh, so, so all the steak knife, all the butter knives in one, all the steak knives in one, oh, all the, all the, the, all the large forks in one, the small forks in one, the tablespoon, the teaspoon. You got eight slots. You might as well use them. All right. And, and I tell her, I said, I said, if, if nothing else, it makes it easy when you take it out. You can just grab them all, sure. put them right. It, it doesn't take as long as if you got them all, <laughs> all mixed together, you got to separate them. <clears throat> Man, I wear my wife out about that. And, and to the point, <coughs> if she can't see me coming, she throws her hands up and so walks away from it. But I, I'm, I'm a, that's a compulsive. That, that, it, that, that messes with me. In fact, it'll make me wash the dishes again. Sure. Turn the dishwasher, right? Re sure. Restack them, Re turn it, because I don't think they're clean. I understand. And then I've seen evidence of them not being clean. <laughs> <laughs> you know, right now, so okay, we're going to restack these, get these together. I'm going, I'm going, I'm going. But that, that's, that, that's, that's my form of incentive. Yeah, okay. 
one thing that used to blow my mind, he's no longer on to today's show, but uh, Matt Lauren, Lauren, whatever his name was, you know, Matt, uh, he was a, one of the male hosts of to today's show, uh, Matt uh, Lauer, not Lauer, <laughs> Matt Lauer, Matt Lauer. He was a hypochondriac, he's a hypochondriac, people don't know that. In fact, uh, what, what you did not know, I learned it from like, you learned the secrets of what's going backstage. They have to keep hand sanitizer whenever he's like, when, like when they go outside and they're shaking hands, yeah, right, yeah. they greet people as yeah, right. being on the patio, mm -hmm. or they bring animals, they have to keep hand sanitizer around because soon they cut air, he's got to get away from people and clean his hands. Mm -hmm. Because he's so afraid that he did, that they're, they're gonna get him germs. In fact, they were even messing with him one day because they brought a psychologist on, and the psychologist was, was dealing with um, uh, our, our insecurities. Mm -hmm. And 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 they said, "Well, who we'll talked to Matt? Matt has." And they brought they set the big thing in hand, said, "They're like, guys, what is this?" And he explained what it was. Oh, yeah, so yeah. he confirmed it that he had. Oh, really? he, he, he doesn't like that. Sure. That's a form of insanity. Yeah. I've got brothers and sisters that do not want to be in small enclosures because yeah, exactly. they're claustrophobic. Yeah, That's a form of insanity. I've got, bro I got brothers and sisters who are battling bipolarism. Sure. That's a form of insanity. Yeah. I've got brothers and sisters who are battling disassociative behavior. That's multiple personalities. That's a form of insanity. We all are insane to some degree. It's just that most of us have done a good job at hiding it. I know someone may be saying, why is Pastor Al spending this kind of time on it? Because that's the question he asks. And he asks, are we, are we all insane? Or is that, or is this one, one type of person? No, we're all insane. Even Dr. Pettis with his old Kappa self is insane. Amen. <laughs> Kappa self. Yeah. Amen. I'm, I'm teasing. I'm teasing. I'm teasing. I'm teasing. I'm teasing. I'm teasing. Amen. Amen. So let me ask, are there any other questions? I don't mind answering them. You got them. Any other questions? I've been watching the screens. I haven't seen anyone ask a question. Um, from on Facebook a lot, or, or, or Periscope, but you can. You can ask your questions. I can see them. Uh, and I have, I'm actually got the, I'm actually can FaceTime on my phone so I can see the, the questions without having to walk up to the, to the thing. So uh, if you have a question, please ask it. If, uh, if we're done with questions, I'll move into our lesson. But before I do, I want to make sure that we, the question you have, we can answer. That doesn't mean you can't ask questions when you move into the lesson. All right, you can still ask questions. Amen. You, you, you good, brother? Going? Yeah, yeah. I, this said, you, you okay. Well, 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 don't, don't worry. I'm getting ready to jump in the lesson. It's going to spark some questions. Okay. When we left off last week, we left off talking about seed. Because we were talking about our seed. Okay. And in the verses 9 to 13 of Genesis chapter 1, on the third day, uh, uh, the the creation story deals with God calling land out of water and then calling vegetation out from the land, up from the land, sprouting up from the land. And we talked about this vegetation, it not it being certain types of vegetation. It was just really, they're talking really just about wheat and barley and, and, and olives uh, because those were the primary economic uh, crops that were generating money for Israelite society, uh, their bread, their their unleavened bread was world renowned. All right, and come to find out, it wasn't just the Jews who used unleavened bread in their religious ceremony. It was a lot of people, and a lot instead of these other persons wasting time trying to grow wheat what they normally could not grow, uh, they would just send people to go to uh, these Jewish mm -hmm. cities to trade money, jewelry, uh, or other items that the Jews need bartering and bring the bread back home. Same thing with the, Jew, the Jews' olive oil. Their olive oil is renowned. I know nowadays we love the fact that we can go to Italy and get olive oil, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. but as wonderful as the olive oil, uh, you know what, I, I, I've got, how many times you got to tell one of your friends that when you are teaching and I'm working, don't oh, yeah. text. I don't, you know, I don't, I don't text them and, and when they're at work, you know what I'm saying? Exactly. So, so, but I, I got this one friend that, I swear he doesn't. He can't go to sleep at night unless I cuss him out. And so, <laughs> so when I get off, get out of Bible study, I'm about to cuss him <laughs> tonight. tonight. He ain't gonna catch it. So, um, uh, but 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 olive oil. We, we now we because now we want the extra version of olive oil, 
and we, we look forward to say from made in Italy. Yeah, yeah, you know right, what I'm saying? Yes, sir. But if if we if, yesterday, yes. yeah yeah yeah, and, 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 but if the truth be told, told <coughs> you really back in the day we didn't want your olive oil to come from Italy. You want your olive oil to come from Palestine, because the Jews had such an amazing refining process of oil that it served multiple purposes. We we went through that, uh, uh, but that but because the Jews and this is where we're picking up here that the priestly authors are drawing from what they saw. And they are extrapolating, okay? They're looking at what is this, and they're seeing the importance and the, the, the importance and the, uh, and, and the central uh, 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 presence that certain items have in Israelite societies, and they're extrapolating backwards that the reason why this particular good is as important as it is because God has always made that good important. He has always made, uh, <coughs> excuse me, he's always, it's always been like this, and this is what he originally intended when he created uh, existence. Now, we, by virtue of living in today's society with the information we have, know that hardly ever anything ever comes on the scene and remains exactly like it is. In fact, there's very few things that still exist in the form that they do. I can almost name them for you. Crocodiles, alligators, and there was, uh, 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 there's a plant. I forgot the name of the plant. But it hasn't changed in so many thousands of years that the educated guests from scientists is that they, 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 they cockroaches. Cockroaches today are the same as cockroaches were gazillions years ago. They haven't, they haven't evolved. You know what I'm saying? But, but, but most everything else has evolved. I was telling the uh, uh, Deacon Jones in the 12 o'clock Bible study that uh, a good example of that is are dogs. Dogs that start off as dogs. I've got an American fox hound. And just as gentle and kind as he can be, really uh, uh, loving the devil, loving like a little furry child. But he didn't start off looking like that. He started off as a wolf. Oh yeah, dogs started off as wolves. And some, per, some group of humans in antiquity, at least one, was able to tame a wild wolf. And you know what probably happened? Uh, um, wolf, the territories of many wolves and territories of humans overlapped each other. And so what probably happened, humans hunting and killing wild life and then cooking it, they can smell it. Dog, let me tell you something. I had a dog, I had a chow chow when I was in law school. Big old hairy, bear looking dog. I mean, he weighed probably a good 120 pounds. I was like, go ahead, dude, you need a job and a social security. You know what I'm saying? I said, you eat as much as I do, you know, your, your doctor's business costs as much as I do. I mean, all intents and purposes, you are another person. And so I used to make lamb chops all the time. I love lamb. Uh, if you want to really impress me, invite me over so we can have some lamb. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. In fact, that's how my wife and I judge restaurants. Uh, uh, we judge them by their lamb chops and rib ribeyes. And depending on how well you cook your lamb chop ribeye, it depends on where you fall in our ranking of, of, of restaurants. And so, um, in fact, the best place we ever had lamb chops was a hole in the wall restaurant in Puerto Rico. We had gone on a cruise, and it stopped in Puerto Rico. And what happened, we had missed dinner on the boat. So we had about an hour, <coughs> hour, 20 minutes to get back to the boat for a lap. So we were kind of rushing. Like, Where are we going with everything? So my wife said, oh, this is the first hole in the wall. So right. we walked in there, and they had lamb chops on it. And they gave us so many lamb chops that the, it, the, it was heaping. These lamb chops, were, and because we were running, we didn't stop to take a picture of the front of the restaurant, nothing. We can't remember what that Restaurant in. I would think I'm gonna have to go to a hypnosis, you know, know someone to put me under hypnosis, yeah, you know, and, and to track track back to where this place was. Um, uh, but but I but I I say all that I say. So I like lamb chops, and I and it was one day. It had been a long day, you know. I had it was interning school study group. So I went home, made lamb chops. Have red wine. Uh, I cut some other stuff because this is gonna be my evening. I'm just gonna relax. Gonna put on some jazz, 
sit back, enjoy my red wine, enjoy my wine chops. So I, so I got a pack, and my plan was to make some so that I could take some to work. And that's it for lunch. So I put two lamb chops on the plate, I turn my back, and go get the vegetables. I hear my plate go, cling. And I looked up, and my lamb chops are gone. And all I see is a tail going around the corner. <laughs> so I run out the kitchen behind Duke, and Duke is going out the, the screen door outside. And so then he posts his head back and I say, yeah, you know, stay out there. Don't even come back in here. I'm going to strangle you when I see you. Because he, he, he took my lamb chops. And so, but as wonderful as Duke is, uh, but, but I, I said that to say, while I'm cooking, <clears throat> as much as it smells good to me, it smells wonderful to him. His nose is even more powerful than mine. So he can really smell the spices in there. <clears throat> And so when he was looking, I bet that look, I, he sat there in the door of the kitchen. He was probably waiting for the time for me to turn my back to, to, to get it. And so if that is how a he, as a domesticated animal act, acts, imagine how a wolf would have acted. A wolf would have, would, would have been smelling, the, the one he would have smelled the blood when, they, when, they, when the, these humans would have killed and skinned the animal. So that would already attract him. Then when they put that meat over fire and it started charring that meat, he would have got that. So imagine, here it is, you probably got one or two brave wolves who are inching closer to the fire. To, and, and you got the people who are, who are watching this and they're like, okay. And so probably for fun, they're cutting off pieces of meat and throwing it to the wolf. So the wolf is eating the meat. And so, you know, after a couple people, the wolf gets up and runs away. Please, because it's scared. Because you know they, they're scared of uh, they're naturally scared of humans. So next time it happens, the wolves come back. They come a little closer. So again, you the union boy think it's funny. Here, throw another piece. So you throw in pieces. And to one day you look up, this joker is sitting there waiting for you to cook. <laughs> come on, now let's be for real. Yeah. He's sitting there yeah, he on his island yeah, waiting yeah, for yeah. you to cook. Mm -hmm. And so what happened? A bond is being created. You know, the, 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 the human is expecting the wolf, the wolf to show up. The wolf is expecting to be fed. And so what happens, after a while, they start tolerating each other. Mm -hmm. And so this happens long enough, you start building a level of trust between the two species. And so what happens, at some point, these wolves will have pups. And they will have them around humans. Especially if they consider humans part of the pack. You know, and that's what was happening. That's why you trained all they, they they say you want to establish a year to alpha quickly when they're puppies. And so the the, 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 the wolves are are, sur they are surrendering the alpha position to these these humans. And so they get the pups, the pups are so what happened, you start inbreeding trust into the animal. Alright? Then what happens, as the group moves, the group may move from the south to the north. It gets cold up north. So they the animal naturally evolution starts causing the animal to develop a different type of fur. A thicker fur to keep it warm. Now here's the thing: if the animal <coughs> has a trust, 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 slosh through snow, it's going to make its legs longer. So what happens? Its belly is not rubbing. You'd be surprised what nature does. And so guess what? Though that though that subset of humans that took those wolves up north of them, after a couple cycles of na of nature re reproducing itself, they've now got a different wolf than the ones down south. Probably doesn't look the same, not the same color. You know, and so what happens? Evolution. Uh, those roses that you like to get, or your wife like to get on Valentine's Day, you know, those have been evolved. Roses usually open up to these big round petals, mm -hmm. but many of us like the roses that stay slender for a long time. Those are genetically uh, uh, created roses. Uh, just like here's the thing. The reason why your French fries at home don't taste like McDonald's and Burger King because you're not even using the same same orange, same potato. They're using a, a, a evolved, a genetically involved uh, potato. You're using a basic white Idaho potato. They're not. In fact, when's the last time you ever seen an orange or, or a tangerine not produce seeds? We call them tangigos. Right, 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 right. right. Yeah, you do. The, 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 those are oranges that do not that have been genetically evolved. So that do not produce seeds. They're, they're made in, in, and so, but all man is doing, man is speeding up an evolution process that nature is already doing. You know, and so with that, I'm saying all that to say that 
even though the Israelites thought that the wheat, the barley, and the olives were what God always meant, no, that always meant to be to exist. Those are the products of, of evolution that over time that they learn how to grow wheat. They, in fact, they learn how to plant at a certain time, how to fertilize, how to water, so that they make the best crop. And every time they make the best crop and they pull seeds from the best crop, the new crop is better than the last crop. And so each time, each iteration is getting better. And so what happened, they, they, they have an evolved agricultural system. But to them, at the time, they don't have the knowledge we have. They don't have the scientific ability we have. So they assume that just because it exists now is the way it always does. You know, in fact, I, I, I uh, you know, we, we do the same thing. We do the same thing. I tell my wife all the time, she wasn't meant to love anybody else. You know, God intended for her to love me. Amen, amen. If he wanted her to love somebody else, she'd be with somebody else. God always wanted her to be with me. Yeah, Even when she didn't know she wanted to be with me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amen. When we first met, she didn't want to be with me. I was like, I was like, so guess who you with now? And I tell her all the time. I said, if all these other men loved you, you would have their last name, not mine. You have mine. Evidently, I'm the one that was willing to step up to the plate and love you the way you need to be loved. Uh, but really, things are, are evolved, but the Israelites are extrapolating backwards. Again, the, their society is largely an agrarian one. That means it's based on agriculture and, hoard, and, and herding. They're farmers and herders. Either you were behind the plow with the donkey. Most of them had donkeys. The few that were lucky enough to have to afford uh, uh, oxen or, or cows had them. But most of them had donkeys. The most of them really had that plow, uh, up the, which really didn't really evolve until we got mechanics, machinery. Um, they either attach to it and you plowed, you grew your field, you grew your, your crops, or you were the one that that uh, herded the pigs, herded the sheep, herded the goats, herded the lambs, herded the uh, the, the, the cows. Uh, and, and you you and at a certain time you took them to slaughter so that you could sell their meat on the on the side. So and if this is such a, 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 a society norm that thousands of year, years after the story was originally created orally, and hundreds of years after it was reduced to writing, Jesus is, 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 is in a society where it's so agricultural that he teaches and preaches in terms of agriculture. You never hear him teach and preach outside of those terms. You find it in the Bible where he <clears throat> talks about machinery. He talks about economy. He talks about corporation. He always talks about a farmer and what happens on a, on a farm. Either a herder or a farmer. And if he doesn't talk about them too, he talks about a shepherd. Then he's talking about himself. Or he's talking about his father. And so this society norm lasts for so long. In fact, it, it, it lasted much longer than that. It, it, it is not until the Industrial Revolution about four or five hundred years ago that we even get an age of machinery. And, 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 and in fact, we're in a new technological age that the machinery isn't so complicated that you can distinguish between machinery invented during the industrial age now. But, but the, the truth is, we haven't had a thousand years of machinery yet. Mm -hmm. You haven't had it. Uh, you're still within your first thousand years. But we know that man has existed as, as homo sapiens for at least 75, 80,000 years. So when you compare life then versus life now, you see there's much more time of life in an agricultural society than an industrial one. We're, we're in a, we live in what we call an industrial society. Um, and because of that, uh, the Israelites who are reducing this to writing, the priestly authors, are saying, all right, God must have intended everything to be agriculture, and he must have intended uh, uh, olives, barley, and wheat to be uh, the, the cat's meow, and and and, and, um, uh, and that's it. that was his divine will. Amen. Uh, let me move forward. Amen. All right. So that brings us to Genesis chapter one, verses fourteen through nineteen. Amen. Praise God. We have about oh about ten more minutes. Right, so we're gonna go for about ten more minutes. Uh, we're gonna start this. Let me read this and start this tonight. 
Amen. Roger, you haven't asked a question yet, brother. Go on. Maybe, maybe I'm not teaching well today. Amen. You should ask a question. Amen. Uh, verses 14 to 19 of Genesis chapter 1, reading from the New Revised Standard Version, read. And God said, let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and for years, and let them be lights in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth. And it was so. God made the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. And the stars, God set them in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth, to rule over the day and over the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening and there was morning, the fourth day. The fourth day. We are uh, at some, Wednesday. We're at Wednesday. We're at Bible study night. And this is the fourth day of the week. Amen. And the first day is Sunday. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. So on the fourth day, on the day of Bible study, God <laughs> creates the light. Uh, the, the two lights, the greater light, the lesser light, to rule over the day and the evening. Now, the first question that should hit your gray matter is, wait a second, if God doesn't create what we now know as the sun and moon until the fourth day, what was that he created in, 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 uh, before in the first day, in verse 3? Because he says in verse 3, let there be light and there was light. Mm -hmm. and, but if he doesn't, if the scripture is specific to say he doesn't create the, the two lights that we now know as the sun and the moon until the fourth day, scripture, you got to understand, nothing happens in scripture by accident. It's very, scripture is very intentional. If it leaves something out, it was intentionally left out. If it puts it in, it's intentionally put in there. You have two separate scriptures that speak all about light. So what is it? What light was that on the, on the first day that was this created? I postulate to you. I argue to you. I put before you for your consideration. Amen. Praise Amen. God. Let me put it like that. I put it for you for your consideration. <laughs> that the light that is spoken about, that God speaks into existence on the first day, is not a luminescent light. It really is his will. Remember what we said a couple Bible studies ago, <clears throat> that everything that's happening in uh, the first chapter is double entendre. There's an obvious plain meaning on the top that you see when you read it. So when you see the greater less light, you're supposed to think light. Luminous, but then there's an underlying secondary meaning, okay? And so, uh, the, we got to remember at the very beginning when God shows up to create the world, the world is a formless void that's covered completely in water, that's covered completely in darkness, okay? The first, and, and we, we talked about how darkness and water, these the seas, the bodies of water represent chaos, destruction. We were talking about it earlier. The body is made up of, of that very thing that God sought to bring under control, bring, bring order to. Uh, so the first thing he does to free the earth from the dominion and control of chaos, disorder, confusion, destruction, uh, uh, and, and mess is that he, can, he, he, he introduces his will to existence. Because you got to remember what darkness represents. Darkness doesn't just represent chaos as order. It rep also represents being outside the will of God. In fact, when you see in biblical stories where they say they were living in darkness, it wasn't just that these are times where there were solar eclipse happening. These are times when people were living outside the will of God. They were doing whatever pleased them. And they're doing whatever they wanted to do. They were not heeding or obeying the word of the Lord. So they're living outside the will of God at this time, all right? When God says, let there be light, he says, let, it's really saying, let my will exist in all things. And so you know what happens, you, we know this, we cut off the light and get dark in here, but if I light a match, that one match will light up this entire room. Because darkness cannot exist in the same place as light. That's, you can't have order and disorder in the same place. Well, I guess you can. You can have order, me, disorder, uh, Dr. Pettis. Uh, in the same room at the same time, but we're working on bringing him into the light, hey, making him you know, a, a, a man of order. Amen. I'm, Dr. Pettis, I mess with you, man. You know, I'm, I'm so happy. I got, there, there's two or three people I like to mess with. And don't worry, I've been giving Brother Rimber a hard time. He's been here working on, he was tearing up the church, trying to knock down a wall. He, I said, someone take that hammer out of his hand. He ended up tearing this, bringing this building down on top of him and trying to tear down, take out, take out a wall. So, but, uh, uh, but, 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 so, 
The light in that verse three is the is God, God's will. Go ahead, you got a question. I'm waiting for it. Woo! All right. At that time when the darkness, like Adam and Eve wasn't created yet then. No. Adam and okay. so let me let me because you weren't here when I gave this uh, this limiting, I guess we would call it in the law, limiting instruction. The Adam, the story of Adam and Eve is not this story. There are two, they are two unique, separate, distinct stories. They are not the same creation story. Okay. You gotta one thing we went through when we were starting this study is understanding that the Bible as we have it in written form does not come about to 485 to sometime between 485 BCE and 475 BCE, all right? That's about the time that the Babylonians uh, come to Judah and Jerusalem and threaten to take the remnant of Israel back to uh, uh, Babylon. Uh, with other Israelite captains. They, they, this time, the Babylonians and the Syrians, they have ransacked the, north, the ten northern kingdoms called Samaria. But all that's left are the two southern tribes that make up Judah. And so they are here. And so what happens, uh, finally someone realized, you remember all those times when God said that he was going to punish us, that he was going to send someone to break our, break, break, break our, strong, our strong willness, our stubbornness? Well, that time has happened. God has... Uh, has has brought that time. And so before then, what we know as a Bible was an oral tradition. All right. What happened, uh, like Deacon Pettis, I think you're the oldest one here. And so if you were if we were a family, the four of us, we your three sons, mm -hmm. and we have you all have our daughters and children, because you're the oldest one, you don't have to work anymore. You don't have to struggle anymore. You got to sweat anymore. You got one job mm -hmm. and you better be good at it. Your job was after dinner sitting there in the den and telling us stories of Israel's history. And that's how they got passed out. But you know, here's the thing. You, you, we, we've seen people tell stories. Every time you tell it, you tell, you, 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 you add a little different. So, so, so the problem we have with many stories, we don't know how many times they've been redacted and changed in their retelling. But what happened, because the Babylonians were coming, the Assyrians were coming, the, there was a mad rush to reduce everything to writing. And so what the, uh, what the ruling class did, they asked that anyone that could recount any story, write it down, and they put it all together. So what happened, the original point was to bring it together to edit it. They didn't have enough time to edit it. So everything has been mashed in together, and it has existed that way, and it, and it became canonized. And, and no one took the time to go back and say, okay, we need to go back and rethink some of these stories. So... You have actually three creation stories in Genesis. You have chapter 1 to chapter 2, verse 2. You have chapter 2 to the end of chapter 4. And you have chapter 6 to the end of chapter 7. So you've got this one that we're working on. Excuse me, which we call the priestly uh, creation story. Then you have the eldest creation story. That's the Adam and Eve story. And in that one, they're not necessarily concerned, but this one is concerned with how did things come about? What's the reason why things exist as they are? The Adam and Eve creation story is worried about the, the introduction of sin and the fall of man. That's it. They're not really worried about God taking the time to create things. The, 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 the emphasis is on how does sin enter into the world and how did we get to be in such a depraved state? The third creation story is a borrowed story because the story of Noah isn't one that originated with Israel. It's, it's a Mesopotamian story. It's a Canaanite story that, uh, the, of the people living around Israel that Israel has taken in because they like what the story is saying. They like the message that it's sending. And so Noah, where, where, where God, where humanity has defiled uh, the earth. Has corrupted earth. God says, I'm so sorry I created humanity because they have corrupted my the earth. God decides to wipe out all humanity and start over with Noah's line, uh, with, with Noah and, and his children. So actually, you are not the son and the sons uh, and your wives are not the daughters uh, of Adam and Eve. You are actually the sons of Noah and the daughters of Noah. You know what I'm saying? If if you follow if you if you follow if you follow the, the, the order that is presented in. But here's the thing you gotta remember. Each of these groups are just trying to give us an idea of how things got created, how things came to be, 
how, how things are created. The truth is, most Jews believe, like most Christians, that these are stories meant to give a, a, a story about God. They can accept, they can... They can accept that man is older than the time period of, of these stories. They're not stupid. They, they can accept that. Uh, we don't know how long the stories were told before they were written down. We don't know if the stories have been told for 25,000 years. You know what I'm saying? We, we just don't know. And so um, I, that's why I say you're asking about Adam and Eve, but that what Adam and Eve really are not pertinent to this story. Even when we get to the point, and we're going to get there, where God creates humanity, he creates the male and female. Right. He said, let us create uh, man, uh, uh, um, really man in our image. Uh, in, in our image, he created them. Male and female, he created them in, our, in, in his image. And then he gave them power and dominion over the world to control, subdue, and, and multiply. But, but the whole thing, we don't get the name of of, 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 a, of a male and female because at that point Genesis chapter 1 indicates that God created a, a lot of us at one time. He didn't just create two. That he created instantaneously a lot of us. Or at least he's responsible for the number of people and the different number the different types of people that exist at the time that this story is reduced to right. And, and there are more people than just Jews in the world. Uh, so, Adam and Eve only come into play in the second story when, we're, when we are focusing on the depra depravity of man and the introduction of sin. And so, but go ahead, you got, it's got right, a question. Man. I see it. A lot of you historians and a lot of you so called Christians, now, perhaps a lot of the Jews are not familiar with what you just told us. But Adam. first, second, and I, 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 actually, a lot of Christians are. Jews know this. You know this. Be, because, okay. because, be, be, because if they are devout, Torah-keeping, or kosher-keeping Jews, mm -hmm. then they have been taught from the time of their infancy yeah. okay. this stuff. Okay. And, and especially if they've gone to like the, uh, the school at Temple Bethel and the Temple Israel, because they mm -hmm. share a school. That school teaches Orthodox Judaism. Mm -hmm. okay. Even though one is a, is, is a contemporary house of Jewish worship, the other one is traditional, that the school teaches Orthodox Judaism. So by the time they have their bat mitzvah and bar mitzvahs at 11 or 12, they know so much about their, because their, they're, they're men and women. They're considered in their society men and women. Yeah. And so by, the, so by the time they become adult walking around, this is why they laugh at us when we try to have conversation with them, because they know we don't know the scriptures like they do. Especially when we get in the Old Testament scripture. Here we are, we say, well, God never meant for this. And they laugh, <laughs> they don't know. They have no idea. Mm -hmm. And so, it's, in fact, this is why Muslims laugh at, laugh at us too. Because they, the part of their training is to take the time to do an in-depth study of Scripture. Especially Old Testament, because a lot of our Old Testament Scripture is their Old Testament. In fact, they flip it. The, uh, the uh, Abraham's children in, 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 in Islam... Uh, Ishmael is a promised child. Isaac is a child of the uh, of the slave. And that 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 God uh, that 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 God worked His will through Ishmael, and that uh, Muhammad is a direct descendant of Ishmael. Okay. Uh, anytime you see the brothers. Jacob and 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 Esau. Esau is the, the son of the promise. Esau is the one that they align to, not not Jacob. But they know this, and they've gone through the scripture. And if you argue with them, trust me, you better be ready to argue. You can't come in no Sunday school talking about, well, he got the whole world in his hand. They're like, well, we know that, fool. Well, but that's not what we're talking about. And so, really, out of the three cousins. And that's what I call Judaism, uh, 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 Jewish Judaism, uh, Islam, and Christianity, they're cousins. Because we all are really Judaistic relig religions. We're, based, we're worshiping the same God. That's why I hate when folks say that uh, Allah and God, is, they're known. Allah is a name of God. It, it's just a name they're using. 
It's no different than we say Jehovah Rapha. We're calling him by name. We're calling him El Elohim. We're calling him a name. We're calling him Yahweh. He's still God. Okay? And they are worshiping the same God. They've just chosen a different way to worship the God. And I tell Christians all the time, some of y'all going to be in a shop when you get to heaven and there's going to be some Muslim and some Jewish people there. And you're going to be able to say, wait a second, uh, hold on. Because really, if we, if we truly study the three religions, they say the same thing. If we practice the three religions the way God wanted us to practice, they say the same thing. I know we've got persons who want to, us to believe that, that Islam is about a violent religion that's promising all these versions to, uh, to, uh, to persons that, that are, adhere to Islam principles. But guess what? Their versions promise some Jewish characters too. We don't ever have a problem with them, don't do we? No, 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 no. I mean, if you're going to talk about Solomon, Solomon, Solomon required all his concubines to be virgins. No other man could have touched his concubines but him. Ain't that, ain't that what uh, you're complaining about with, 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 with Islam? Yeah. You know? I, I, I mean, let's, let's, let's be for real. Yeah. There's some things happening here. Uh, but the truth is, all, all three are religions that espouse methodology to encounter and embrace God in heaven together. And what, what happens, not, I, I make the argument that Jesus is away. As a Christian pastor, I make the argument that Jesus is away. But I'm smart enough to let God have enough room that if I got an Islam or a Jewish brother or sister that says, well, I'm, I'm going to get it this way, to let them trust God Especially if they believe God has spoken to them and given them that rule for God to bring them in how God wants to bring them in and for me to follow what God wants me to follow and to, and to serve him. Now, if God gives me a chance to speak to these brothers and sisters in an, in, in an effort to persuade them to join me on this side, I am. I'm not going to pass up that effort. Mm -hmm. But I'm not going to condemn them or, feel, or, or, or minimize them if they say, no, I'm a devout Muslim, I'm a devout Jew. I'm going to honor that. And I'm going to celebrate that you're celebrating God. Right. You know, Sam. Uh, but but, I, but I, 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 say, I say that to you in the context of your original question. Remind me of the original question again. I kind of went, what well, was it about? Uh, I'm trying to think. You, you put so much out there. I know, I know. Sometimes I lose my own train of thought. It, it happens. I'm human. I, I, amen. I don't ever want people to think, well, you know, he's so above. No, I'm, I'm human too. Um, I lose my train of thought sometimes too. Uh, a lot of times, probably all the time. Um, uh, amen. So, but but we want to be mind, we want to be mindful of, of, of this because the world we live in is pluralistic. There's just not Christians and no one else. There's Christians, Muslims. There are even Hindus. Yes, that's right. And, and, and Confucius, Confucius, Confucius yeah. Buddhists, Buddhist. and if you want to, if you really want me to blow your mind, mm -hmm. in every one of those religions, there's a reference to Jesus. He has a name. It's usually Isi, Ish, or Isa. Mm -hmm. uh, somehow or another, he has found his way into all these other religions. Yeah. And the reason why many religious authorities believe that is so is during that. 18 year span where we don't know what hear anything about Jesus and we are told he begins his ministry by returning to to uh, Israel which means he's been away the idea is maybe quite possibly that Jesus has gone to these other places and has spent time there learning about the different cultures the different Middle East Near East and Far East cultures and what happened that has informed his his, his own ministry, so that what we're getting is a, a very unique ministry that is completely different than anything the Jews have seen before. Go ahead. Go, got All right. Go ahead. Uh, Judaism, they, a lot of Christians, a lot of people say women should not be pastors. Is that true? Uh, uh, I mean, that's just so Christian. I'm just saying. Okay, so I know. I, I, what, what you have is an interplay of 
misinterpretation of scripture, okay. as well as the fact that we, we've lived in and always lived in basically a patriarchal society. Okay. okay? A society that's male oriented, male run, male led. Okay. And and what happens, uh, like for example, Christians are good at this. I Paul command that no woman should teach. She should be silent and if she has something to say, let her first ask her husband who mm -hmm. would explain it to her in private. What we don't take the time to understand is Paul was writing in first century, in, in the first century. Christianity is considered the pagan religion everywhere. Right. It is not the dominant religion like it is today. It is it's the same way many of us look at Buddhism, like, or, or better yet, the Harry Christmas when we on the beach. Like, oh, what is the same way people go to Christianity. And in the first century, Christians were being persecuted for the simple fact they were considered pagans. It was not unusual for in, in the middle of the night, the authorities to raid homes, arrest people, take them to public places, to public jails, where they were held until it was whatever day they had, they, they, people would go to their local coliseums, where they would, would, would tie raw meat to these Christians' bodies, Release them out into the bottom of the Colosseum, and the the lions that they ain't fed for or tigers or wild animals they ain't fed for days. Release them. So remember, I told you about the wolf and that 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 blood. They can smell the blood already. So these people, they, or they would put them on crosses, uh, turn the cross upside down, set the cross on fire. They would persecute these these persons. And so one of the things that made that made Christianity different from other religions at the time is Christianity had women pastors. And so when Paul hears, and what's happened in Rome, there are more women pastors than there are male pastors that are leading these house churches. And when Paul hears of this, knowing what, we're, what Christians were up against, he is making a decision as an apostle to protect the burgeoning church. He wants to minimize the church's exposure to violence, to cruelty and death. And so what he's saying is, I'm not allowing women to hold leadership roles at this time because if they do, they're going to bring unwanted attention to the church and people are going to die. But then here's the thing, he says that in one chapter, next chapter, thanks uh, Aquila, uh, and Priscilla, Priscilla, Lydia, he goes to a list. And in the list, out of the 15, 16 people, he thinks 11 of them are women. And in fact, he thinks, he thinks the churches, not only in Rome, but other churches, except in Lydia, who was, and, and he said, and Lydia and other uh, female and other apostles, both male and female. So guess what? There were female apostles at this time. He's, uh, he's recognizing that, guess what? I have co-leaders who are women. Because of a lot of men's inferiority complex, because of their egos, what happened in religion, men have tried to relegate the office of pastor or the leadership office, offices to men. But let's be for real. If we're going to be for real, every church is run by 85, 80 to 85 percent of the women. Mm, that's right. Like, oh. Amen. 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 And so the thing is, in, in, in fact, uh, uh, is, is so one of the major critiques that the church is up against is the church's uh, dogmatic patriarchalism against women. And one of the things that we have to be very careful is not to be an organization or organism that hinders, but an organism that enables. And here's the thing, who are you to say that God didn't call a woman to preach or pastor? Now you may not like it, and if you don't like it, there's other places you can go to worship. But here's the thing. That's a male thing. It, it is a male thing, but, but it's a hypocritical male thing. Yeah, it is. Because the same argument that has been used to keep Women out of the pulpit is the same argument that was used to keep black people out of the pulpit. And what pissed me off, excuse my language, what pissed me off a couple years ago when we were having this whole debate 
about whether gay marriages should be legal, and I'm listening to these Christian pastors say, call gays, lesbians, uh, 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 homosexuals, transvestites, uh, transsexuals, Q, the Q community, abominations. And I can close my eyes and hear those same type of Christian pastors saying, you know, it's an abomination to have the N-words in the pulpit leading and preaching church. And what bothered me is when I saw, especially at Charlotte, one day had a news conference where you had all these preachers and, and behind them were all these black preachers. And preachers. And I was like, how dare you hypocrites stand by? You are already, you know, every one of you got at least two gay people in your family. That every time you have a get together, there they are. Yeah, they are. That's true. Come on, Simon, let's tell the truth. Yeah. All these people, have you noticed? In fact, that's why all that's why I laugh at all these Republicans. Talking about gay this, gay that, and they come to find all the very ones who are the strongest proponents against the gays were gay themselves. Gay themselves. Got the one tapping the foot under the under the uh uh, under the, under the stall, another one trying to molest his his, his the male. Was yeah, he was tapping and going to the airport stall. <laughs> and the word was he would put his foot under there, and they tap that was yeah. for their right, right. that they're gay. Yeah. Had a couple other ones that were raping their, their young uh, uh, Congress pages. Mm -hmm. Those are college students that get interns or summer shit summertime to work with senators and, and, and representatives. Some of them are in there raping their young male pages mm -hmm. and whatnot. All these, so, you know, we don't have a right as black folks to be, to, to be trying to, dis, to, to pick and choose between people. As much as we've been the butt of everything, as much as we have discriminated against, we should be the last ones trying to discriminate against anyone. And another thing I have a problem with is we get upset because everyone else has taken the model from the Civil Rights Act and made it work for them. And we get upset and say they stole it. No, they didn't steal it. We left it on the table. Because as soon as we thought we were in, we didn't think we needed it anymore. Because there used to be a time you mentioned civil rights. Why are we talking about that? We beyond that. We in, in post-racial. Now you realize how not post-racial this society is. Now you want to pick it up and claim it for yourself again. No, they didn't steal it. You left it there. And when they realize that model worked and they've taken it and they've expanded it. Let me tell you, I think, and I applaud my gay brothers and sisters for this, one of the reasons why they have been so successful at forcing the conversation is that they've taken platforms that heterosexuals thought were uninteresting. In fact, whether, if you go beyond 20 years ago, None of us wanted to watch Home and Garden TV. That's true. Home and Garden TV was at one station you flipped over. <laughs> and then Script, when it was bought by Script, Scripps had a nerve to do a cooking channel. And that became the channel for anyone that can't cook, but you didn't watch it. But guess what? Guess what the gay and lesbian community did? They 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 domineered those two channels. And they made home and garden and cooking so interesting that you had heterosexual men. What, 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 what am I missing? What am I missing? Bravo! I mean, they, they our, 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 our homosexual brothers and sisters, our gay brothers and sisters, have cornered Bravo and made millions of dollars on Bravo. So much so that they are now so part so much part of America, the American society, stream, uh, American stream, entertainment stream, that now you have references where if you didn't know who the characters were, you didn't know that you are speaking about something that's, that is gay in nature. Yeah. They, 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 they have taken the very things that we said were uninterested, turned them into something interesting, and have, have, have uh, uh, it's saturated the, the media, the media saturated our society to the point you cannot function in society without them. And nor can they function without us. And that's really how it should be. Yeah. That's really how it should be. And cause because guess what? There's still people. And here they and if you're gonna quote the scripture about judging, let's also quote the scripture also that's other scripture says, do not judge lest you be judged. Yeah. For the very measure you judge by is a measure that be held against you. That's right, right. 
Jesus said also, how you gonna get the 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 uh the splinter out of your brother's eye when you got a hog in yours? What he's saying, you got a bigger issue than your brother does. That's right. And I know the scripture says when someone's out of order, take your witnesses, but we miss that. We miss what that means. What that means, that that's really about someone that's trying to get away from the body of Christ. And they're doing things to separate themselves. That is saying no. That's to bring them back, to reinstate them to the body of Christ. If after you've done that, they still want to join, treat them as if they're not a member anymore. Mm -hmm. Because that's exactly what they they indicate. They don't want to be part of you anymore. Infidelity. Yeah. yeah. But but again, we miss that. And we, we, mm -hmm. we are so cruel and so manipulative. Yeah. And we have used these scriptures yeah. to put more shackles and chains yeah. on people than we have to free them. And again, I really think that many of us are going to be surprised to get to heaven because you will see more gay people yeah. than, than you see good, good old Christians. <laughs> All right. Yeah, you you gonna see more gay people? You gonna be like, how'd you get there? Because I love God. <laughs> and God will look at you and say, the reason why you're on that side of the, uh, uh, of the gates because you're a hypocrite. <laughs> you didn't you had no problem loving people on their heterosexual, but as soon as you found them homosexual, then you didn't want to love them anymore. That's right. I tell people all the time, one of my greatest mentors who taught me so much about life was a gay man named Curtis. I met him at law school. He was not a law professor. He was not a dean. He was not even a lawyer. Curtis was the director of, 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 of administrative service for the school. In other words, he ran the copy room. But Curtis had been around that law school so long that he knew the law better than the rest, than the rest of the knuckleheads. And Curtis took a fatherly liking to me that he would provide me with stuff and give me secrets Said, you know what, when you take this class, take it with this person, not that person. That person's going to teach you. That person's going to hold you back. Mm -hmm. And every moment of the time, because I think Brother Curtis is going to be the Lord now, that, that him and I fellowshiped, there was never an attempt to use the mentorship as a cover. In fact, make you laugh, him and I, uh, had gone to dinner once, just to, to talk and whatnot, to catch up. And one of his friends came, and his friends was like, who is he? He's cute. And so right, right, her right, said, right, right. he is not gay. Right, right. Right. He is straight. Right, right. Please leave him alone. Right, 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 right. I, I, I was like, I, I'm feeling a little uncomfortable. Yeah, and so Curtis, he was very point to, to tell the person. And, and, and I see him, and I say to myself, what lessons of life would I have missed out on? Had I not have allowed the mentor relationship to develop, what if I said, you know what, since you're not a lawyer, you can't teach me anything. Right. Mm -hmm. Or since you're gay, you can't teach me anything. You're right. In fact, uh, one, one of the worst times I had when my, me and my, my first fiance, fiance and I broke up, it was Curtis that walked me through that time. My frat brothers were too scared to talk to me. My friend, my homeboys were too scared. I had two homeboys, but they weren't here. But we were boys. We had been through some things. But most of them were too scared because they were too afraid of getting emotional, all that mushy stuff. And so they thought the way to deal with, come on, Negro, let's go shoot some ball. Let's go lift weights. In other words, let's go be men. Let's go do manly stuff. Man up. But at that time, my heart was broken. And I, and I needed someone that could speak to me that in that way, right. and Curtis was the one who said, "It's okay mm -hmm. for your heart to be broken. It's okay for you to share tears. It's okay for you to be uh, to be upset." Mm -hmm. He said, "You call me whenever you need to call." That's cool. He said, "He said if I got to fix dinner, if I get pour us drinks, whatever we need to do to talk." Mm -hmm. And there were times we did. I took him up on Arthur hours, mm -hmm. and I'm like, "Why did she do that? Why would she leave me like that?" Right. And he walked, well, he and again. Ain't never been with a woman, but has but had his heart broken mm -hmm. in love because love is love is love. Right, 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 right. Which is why I say God. If we gonna say God is love, God is all love. We ain't just this love over that love. He's all love. He's white love, black love, straight love, gay love. Mm -hmm. He's love. Right. Amen. Amen. All right, I'm gonna throw some more time for you, Lord. Amen. When the folks at at daytime, 
uh, uh, noonday going to be jealous because they're going to think I'm giving me all so much attention, not giving them any attention. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. Then let's do this. We're going to close out now with our closing word of prayer. Uh, amen. Praise God. One of the things that we talked about uh, last night at the men's ministry meeting was about being very specific about that which we're praying for. And many times we just say, let's pray for Brother Pettis. You know, we ain't seeing him. Let's hope everything's all right. Instead of praying that, like for example, we didn't know that you could it was so dark you couldn't make out. So, we, so guess what? We got to pray for something, either new eyes or new illumination, so that you can recognize, you know, that's still praying for you, but that's praying so that in your effort to get here, you're able to find the church when the sun goes down in the nighttime. Same thing, we're praying for Sister Carol, uh, amen, that God uh, will show this world that the doctors are not the final say-so, and that there's healing waiting for her. Uh, praying for you, Brother Goins, in, 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 the, uh, in the relationship that you're sharing with a certain family member right now, that God will continue to work through that. We're praying for uh, First Fellowship Charlotte specifically, that God would do two things. That not only that he'd keep us, but he would allow a spirit of service to fall afresh and anew in this place, and that those he's bringing to us, that they would have a spirit of service. Uh, uh, we won't be mindful of those persons that are sick and shut in us as we go to God, as well as those persons that have recently lost loved ones. Here, let us uh, have our closing word of prayer. Dear Father God, creator of the heavens and the earth, God, we come to you right now. Thank you, God, for this time of sharing. This time of openness, God, this time of commitment, this time, God, of making us aware of those things that we need to be aware of so that, God, we're able to be the disciples and stewards that bring you honor, honor, glory, and all the wonderful things that, God, you so rightfully deserve. Father God, you didn't have to do it, but you did. You didn't have to bring us here, but you did. And, God, we thank you for it, and we realize, God, that you brought us here, and you left us with some corresponding responsibilities, God, some discipleship responsibilities, some stewardship responsibilities. And, Father God, we take those seriously. Father God, we pray that your spirit of service will fall fresh and anew on everyone here at this church, that when they walk in, that they would be struck by it in such a way that they'll find themselves wanting to serve before they realize that they are serving. Father God, we pray that those people that you're sending to join us have a spirit of service that they want to serve. They want to be a blessing to help other people. Father God, we pray specifically for Brother Pettis, Deacon yes, Pettis, God, that God, you would, you would illuminate and that you would make it so that he's able to recognize the church at nighttime when he's driving so that he's able to join us in the evening for those uh, activities that are going on here at the church. Father God, we pray for Brother Goins and the relationships that he has with his family members, that God, you will restore them, renew them, reform them, reconfigure them, God, and re-energize and revitalize them, God, so that him and his loved ones may be able to relate together as God you require them to do. We pray for Sister Carol, God, that you will continue to watch over and love her and give her healing, give her restoration, give her renewance, God, give her faith and confidence, God, so that every day is a better day, that God, every day is a day of improvement. So much so, God, that you leave the doctor scratching the head trying to wonder what's going on. God, we pray for Brother Sean, God, and the love that he's showing and demonstrating for his wife, that God, you would sh show us how to love and care for our spouses, how to, uh, God, to understand that this is not an opportunity, but an institution, and that those, God, who are part of the institution are called upon to make the institution better than it was before we entered into it. Father God, we pray right now for Saturday's Enjoy Marriage Ministry uh, session, God. We pray, God, that you allow the people to come and for us to start this process of healing, of growing together, of knitting ourselves together together so that God our marriages may not just be about love but be about the ministry that you called them to be. Father God there's so many people that are standing in the need and we pray for them right now. We ask God that you do an amazing work in their lives so that God when we come together we may all join in one course declaring that you are good, you are amazing and you are Lord God Almighty. Now Father God take us home but God let us leave from this church but never for your presence. God keep us so that God we're able to be uh, the people you call us to be and bring us back so that we may worship you this weekend in spirit and in truth. It's in your son's mighty matchless, marvelous, magnificent name that we do pray. Amen. 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 We're going to.